12 Μαΐου 2015 βρισκόμαστε και πάλι στο Πανεπιστημιακό Νοσοκομείο Κορνέλ, όπου δίδεται και φέτος το βραβείο Παπανικολάου σε εξέχουσα προσωπικότητα της Ιατρικής Επιστήμης. Όπως γνωρίζετε, ο δόκτωρ Παπανικολάου είναι από τις μεγαλύτερες μορφές της Ιατρικής. Έχει έζησε πολλά χρόνια στην Αμερική και στα 50 στα 50 χρόνια που ήταν καθηγητής εδώ στο Πανεπιστημιακό Νοσοκομείο Κορνέλ βρήκε το τρόπο να κάνει τη διάγνωση του καρκίνου τραχύλου στις γυναίκες που έχει σώσει πολλές γυναίκες από το θάνατο. Λοιπόν, είμαστε πάρα πολύ σήμερα ευχαριστημένοι που έχουμε τέτοια προσώπηση από γιατρούς και επιστήμονες και γενικά Έλληνες και Φιλέλληνες σε αυτή τη μεγάλη οργάνωση, διοργάνωση που κάνουμε κάθε χρόνο. Αυτή η διοργάνωση υποστηρίζεται από τον Ιατρικό Σύλλογο της Νέας Υόρκης, από την Ομοσπονδία Ιατρικών Συλλόγων Αμερικής και Καναδά, από το Πανεπιστημιακό Νοσοκομείο Βέντε Κορνέλ, που εδώ στην Ανατομία ήταν πολλά χρόνια καθηγητής ο δόκτωρ Παπανικολάου, και από τον, την Ομοσπονδία ε, Σωματείων Ελληνικών ε, της μεγαλύτερης περιοχής της Νέας Ιστορική μέρα σήμερα ο Σύλλογος των Ελλήνων Εκπαιδευτικών, ο Προμηθέας που ειδηθήθηκε το 1975 και θα γυρτάσει τα 40 του χρόνια, είναι εδώ σήμερα για να δώσουμε τα βραβεία σε έξι ελληνόπουλα από διάφορα αμερικάνικα και ελληνικά λύκεια της Νέας Υόρκης, της Νέας Υιωσίας και Δεκανέτικα, τα οποία παιδιά έγραψαν άριστες εκθέσεις στην ελληνική γλώσσα για τη ζωή του έργου και το έργο του Παπανικολάου και πώς αισθάνονται σαν Ελληνόπουλο. Και θα, το κάθε παιδί θα βραβευτεί με έπαινο από τον Σύλλογο Ελλήνων Εκπαιδευτικών Προμήθειας ως επίσης και 250 δολάρια α, χρηματικό ποσό από το Alma Bank, το Προμηθέα και από το Titania, το Titan Foods στην Αστόρια. Σας ευχαριστούμε και πάρα πολύ για την πρόθεση που κάνετε τη ιστορία του ελληνισμού. Φέτος τιμάμε την δόκτωρα Χατζάρ, η οποία είναι η καθηγήτρια και διευθύντρια του τμήματος της Ανατομίας στο Ιατρική Σχολή Κορνέλ της Νέας Υόρκης που ανήκει στο Πανεπιστημιακό Νοσοκομείο και εδώ είναι που έκανε την εκπληκτική δουλειά του ο δόκτωρος Παπανικολάου και ανακάλυψε τον τομέα της κυταρολογίας και ανακάλυψε τον τρόπο για διάγνωση του καρκίνου του τραχύλου στις γυναίκες που έχει σώσει τόσες ζωές. Είμαστε λοιπόν υπερήφανοι σαν Έλληνες και σαν Έλληνες γιατροί και επιστήμονες ότι κάθε χρόνο τιμάμε τον δόκτωρα Παπα-Νικολάου για την εργασία του και δίνουμε βραβείο δόκτωρος Παπα-Νικολάου από τον Ιατρικό Σύλλογο της Νέας Υόρκης σε διακεκριμένους επιστήμονες που έχουν σχέση με το έργο του δόκτωρα Παπα-Νικολάου. Ε, βλέπουμε λοιπόν εδώ πίσω ε, την, ε, μερικές φωτογραφίες από το τμήμα της Ανατομίας ε, στο Ιατρική Σχολή Κορνέλ ε, και θέλω να πω ότι ο Δ. Παπα-Νικολάου που γεννήθηκε στην Εύβοια και έκανε δουλειά στη Γερμανία και μετά έρθει στην Αμερική παντρεμένος και εργάστηκε εδώ για 50 χρόνια ε, στη, στο εργαστήριο της Ανατομίας ε, ο δόκτωρας Παπα-Νικολάου ήταν και ο, ένας από τους συνειδητές του Ιατρικού Συλλόγου της Νέας Υόρκης. Ο Ιατρικός Συλλόγος της Νέας Υόρκης έχει μεγάλη ιστορία, είναι 75 χρόνια ε, στη, ε, μπροστά ε, στην ελληνική ιατρική επιστήμη και βλέπουμε ότι συνεχίζει με αυτά τα καλά έργα που κάνει. Δίνα Αλμέδα. Στο Λάιμπερο Παπα-Νικολάου. We mostly use it right now as a conference room than an actual library, just because everything's on the internet nowadays, so it's easier to get information off the internet than going to the old-fashioned periodicals. But we do have some old journals available. It's a lot faster. Um, this is the portrait that they like for you guys to see all the time. So this is Papa Nicolau, the portrait they have made for him. This is the microscope, and this is the microtone for paraffin sectioning. This is a lab, a typical setup of a lab. In the lab, we always have lab benches, There's lots of solutions and waters everywhere, to be honest with you. Your sink is your best friend. And we also do different kinds of experiments here. We do a lot of things, mostly with um, animal tissue. We do things with tissue culture cells. 
Today we celebrate and, and introduce the 2015 Papa Nicolau Symposium. We have a number of honorees, students that have won awards, writing essays about Dr. George Papa Nicolau. We are also honoring Dr. Catherine Hajar from Cornell University. And most of all, I am proud to say that we are honoring Dr. Ioannis Zevoudakis, a very, very well-known, respected, and well-loved obstetrician and gynecologist here at Cornell. He is, achieve he is receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award and is my pleasure to be involved in this step. Um, as, as you know, our department is very proud to, to be part of this event. Even though most of us are not of Greek heritage, uh, we nonetheless take great pride uh, when we pass the statue of Papa Nicolau. He's one of the great treasures that this institution has and uh, we're, we're very proud to be here. I was fortunate that I was able to convince him to join our department, and it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. He's been an obstetrician's obstetrician uh, with my own family. He delivered my sister. Tremendous common sense that, that's so precious in our world today. Uh, he's, he's love, and what I love about him even more than being a great doctor, he's a great person. He has a decency that permeates everything he does. He's a great family man. Uh, he loves his wife. His, I'm so glad his daughters are here today. Uh, this permeates. We've had discussions about re religion. Although he's tried to convince me with my name, Francis, to be honest, I, I just couldn't take the, the plunge and convert. And what I learned, I didn't want to be baptized and go into the bath. So, so that I couldn't do. That I couldn't do. So, but, but Giannis, I, just as a, a small, small token, or, or this is from the behalf of our whole department. I'll, I'll read to you. You can let Ronald open. I don't want to hurt you. It's too heavy to open. But I'll tell you what it says. It says to Giannis, our friend, with love and respect from your Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Giannis, we do love and respect you. Thank you, Frank. It's a, a big honor for me and thanks to everybody from our staff that uh, you are here standing in front of me. I wish I could stand for you more than you are standing for me today. Uh, but I want to say just the two words. Uh, I came when uh, uh, Anna Rita Fuchs and uh, uh, Fritz Fuchs uh, were uh, the church people from uh, this department. I learned everything I know about uh, gynecology from Stanley Birnbaum, and I learned anything I know from infectious disease uh, from uh, Bill Ledger, who uh, is the person who introduced <coughs> the importance of anaerobic bacteria, not only in the United States, but all over the world. Thank you, Dr. Ledger, for your contribution, and Dr. Birnbaum to me. And then uh, uh, I had the privilege to work with uh, uh, Frank Shevenak and find out that it is not only the mother that we take care of always, but also there is a fetus there that we need to also uh, consider it uh, a life being, that we have to have uh, special care for it, and uh, Frank introduced uh, the idea all over the world uh, uh, back to the fetus as a patient. So um, in the area where Dr. Papa Nicolau arrived and uh, started his research and excelled with the PAP test, and then the uh, infectious uh, diagnosis of uh, the origin of the abnormality due to the parvovirus, the, the, the the virus that is responsible for this, uh, where Dr. Ledger has done basic work on that, uh, just uh, gives uh, every physician a different feeling and uh, a pride for being the part of this uh, inst institution. So uh, thank you again, and uh, I'm sure um, thanks uh, for Cornell uh, even going to get uh, better and better. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. The Hellenic Medical Society of New York, together with the Federation of Hellenic Societies, Medical Societies of North America, uh, would also here like to present uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award 
to our distinguished uh, member, Dr. Yanni Serbudakis. Tony Ringos, you can come forward, please. And Thank you, Mr. Mazidis. Uh, congratulations also, uh, Dr. Niakias, for your presidency. Uh, my name is Tony Ringos, as he mentioned earlier. I'm, I'm um, representing the, speaking on behalf of the Panevoyko Society. And we, I'll make my uh, briefing really short. Uh, we are especially proud of the man we honor today, a man of vision who contributed so greatly to women's health to this very day. Dr. George Papanikolaou was born in Kimi, a town on the island of Evia, Greece. He was born on May 13, 1883. After he completed elementary school in Kimi, his father, Nicholas Papanikolaou, who was a medical doctor in Kimi, sent him to high school in Athens. After high school, he attended the University of Athens, where he studied languages, philosophy, and music. He graduated at the age of 21, and then attended the medical school of Athens. After obtaining a medical degree, he returned to Kimi, but he did not want to practice medicine there. Dr. Papanikolaou had a passion to achieve something unique. He told his father he did not want to work in an office and just make money. His passion was to work in a research center. So he rebelled against his father, but his father <laughs> didn't hold it against him, which most Greek fathers, they do. Instead, his father sent him to Germany. At that time, it was the intellectual center for postgraduate studies at the University of Munich. There, Dr. Papanikolaou obtained his doctoral degree in zoology. During his time in Germany, Dr. Papanikolaou's press and self-searching intensified. Dr. Pa Papanikolaou's father still had hopes for him to return to practice medicine in Kimi. However, to his disappointment, Dr. Papanikolaou wrote a letter to him saying, for me, to come and lay myself in that environment without research is suicide. I can never do that, not even if I have to disobey you. In time though, Dr. Papa Nicolau did return to Kimi and married Mahi, also known as Mary Mavrogeni. After getting married, since there were few professional options available in Kimi, or anywhere else in Greece for that matter, Dr. Papa Nicolau went to France, where he worked as a physiologist. After some time, he returned to Greece to serve in the army during the Balkan Wars of 1912. While serving in the Greek army, he met Greek American volunteers who told him about the vast opportunities that America had to offer. Due to this encounter with Greek Americans, he came to the United States in 1913. Due to the economic conditions in the United States, life was difficult for him. Initially, he sold carpets and played, and played the violin at restaurants at night. His wife worked to help him make ends meet by working at Gimbel's, <coughs> stitching buttons for $5 a week. Anybody remember Gimbel's? A year later, in 1914, he started working here at Cornell University. Dr. Papa Nicolaou worked at Cornell University for almost 50 years. Dr. Papa Nicolaou gave and continues to give life to women throughout the world because of his work. Thank you. So now we'll progress to the scientific program. And uh, we're going to hear from Professor Hajar the talk on annexin A2 and retinal angiogenesis, adventure of a physician scientist. Thank you, Dr. Hajar, for the seminal uh, talk here and for supporting the Dr. Pepe Nicolau Symposium every year for many years. Please come to the stand.
thank you, Dr. Mazidis, and I'm very honored to uh, receive this award today. And one of the highlights of my career as chairman of the department has really been my association with all of you, the support that you brought to our department uh, and uh, to the medical college. As Dr. Mazidis said, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the research that we've been doing over the years um, and just try to give you a flavor for some of the adventures that we've had. But first I want to say to you that I've never, I never had the honor of meeting Dr. Papa Nicolaou, uh, but nevertheless I feel a kinship with him. I feel an affinity. And that's because I think we have a few things in common. And those include the fact that I am a physician scientist, as was he. Secondly, that uh, he was a member of the Department of Anatomy, which was the precursor of our Department of Cell and Developmental Biology. Thirdly, he did research that was based on his observations of cells, and the research that my laboratory group has done also began by studying cells. And thirdly, Dr. Pif Papanicolaou had a great excitement uh, that, that really emanated from discovery. And I've had the benefit of that as well. This is um, an image from his uh, Atlas of Exfoliative Cytology that was published in 1954. And um, I really love to look at this because the colors are so beautiful and it's so, so vibrantly illustrated. And um, I found a quote from Dr. Papanicola, which is the following. <coughs> he wrote, the first observation of cancer cells in the smear of the uterine cervix gave me one of the greatest thrills I ever experienced during my scientific career. And I feel that I know exactly what he was talking about, because although I have not made a discovery anywhere near the magnitude of his, every little thing that we find in the lab, every new piece of information is really thrilling and it's been one of the greatest um, thrills of my career. So finally, just another word about Dr. Papanicolaou. This is the portrait of Dr. Papanicolaou that ha hangs in our library. Every Tuesday morning, we have a lab meeting in that library, uh, like we did this morning, and uh, he kind of looks over our shoulder. Um, and in looking at the biography of Dr. Papanicolaou that was written by his niece, Maria Papanicolaou Kokori, um, I was struck by the statement. She, she wrote the following. I hesitated very much to start this book, Uncle George. I was wondering what I had to offer with respect to your struggle with your inner and outer world, your wholehearted dedication to a goal, and the strange combination of sensitivity and toughness required in order to achieve it. And I feel as a physician scientist that I know what she was talking about. We all struggle with our inner and outer worlds. We, we worry that we might not have the right hypothesis. We might not be able to find uh, the answer to the questions that we're asking. And we struggle with the outer world. Will we have the resources to do the work that we want to do? Can we get the right collaborators? Will our colleagues believe what we are trying to achieve? Can we get the funding for our work? And um, I have to say that it's comforting to know that Dr. Papanicolaou um, uh, had the same struggles that we have. And I have to say also that he has served as a great inspiration for our research group. So finally, just a few thank yous. First of all, to all of you, to the Hellenic Medical Society. I'm very honored to have this uh, award, to receive it. I'd like to thank my mentors, uh, Dr. Ralph Nachman, and also the late uh, Aaron Marcus. Um, also my family who are here, <laughs> uh, my husband David, my daughters, Kate and Amanda, and my nephew, uh, Mike Amberson, who's unexpectedly here as well. Um, and members of the lab uh, who are listed here, particularly Dina Almeida, who parenthetically led the tour for the students today, uh, and Wei Lu, who contributed to many of the of the studies that I presented. We have two new people that will be joining the lab very soon. Uh, finally, past lab members, they're all listed here. I won't read all the names, but I just want to highlight Yi Hui Huang, who um, did all of the studies involving oxygen treatment of the mice. And finally, our collaborators, in particular, Dr. Salar Tish uh, in ophthalmology, 
that's helping us with some of the human studies. So thank you very much. I'm truly very honored. And thank you for listening. Excellent. Very inspirational for all of us. Dr. Hajar, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the family, your family, your collaborators who are all here, and uh, we look forward to continuing our collaboration and sponsoring this annual symposium. Uh, next, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Valerie Saidas, who's uh, uh, helped us every year in uh, finding speakers uh, for the Dr. Pepe Nicolau Symposium. And uh, this year, uh, she has uh, gracefully involved uh, Mr. Paul Elgert here, the Cytopathology Supervisor in the Department of uh, Pathology at NYU Langone School of Medicine, affiliated with Bellevue Hospital Center. And he will be speaking to us tonight on cervical cancer screening, changes in screening guidelines and screening rates, and a brief comments on Dr. Papa Nicolau nominations for the Nobel Prize. Elgert. Not Dr. Papa Nicolau, but the Asian woman in this picture is Maxine Morahisa, who was my supervisor when I was at Roosevelt Hospital. And I also uh, spent some time with Dr. Leopold Koss at Montefiore, who carried on Dr. Papa Nicolau's work when Dr. Papa Nicolau went to Miami. Um, but briefly, the a chronology of the history of cervical cancer screening guidelines. Uh, Pre-1980, we were trying to get uh, regular screenings with an annual pap test. Um, in the 80s, I participated with the College of American Pathologists and the American Society for Cytotechnology and other organizations. We met in Washington twice a year and we were trying to promote annual pap smears. Um, even though the Cancer Society had yearly or every three years, if there were two annual exams, nobody because of lawsuits ever went to three years, I don't think. Um, and that continued until uh, liquid-based pap smears appeared on the scene in the late 90s. Um, and there, the uh, starting of pap smears was three years after uh, vaginal intercourse, or 21, whichever came first. Um, I still miss seeing those 16-year-olds with high grades. Uh, we got them at Bellevue, but I'm not sure other people did. Um, and from a population point of view, again, you're, you're spending a lot of potential harms screening for very low prevalence. Dr. Papanicolaou has been mentioned a number of times in cytology literature at least, anecdotally being nominated for the Nobel Prize. Has anybody here looked at the Nobel Prize nomination database? Does anybody have a guess when he was first nominated for a Nobel Prize? Any ideas? Ten years, too late. He was first nominated for a Nobel Prize in 1948 <laughs> by this gentleman, uh, Dr. Donald Sheehan. He's the Neil Armstrong of nominations. Uh, Dr. Sheehan just happened to be, was faculty at NYU um, from 1937 until his death mm. in 1964. Except for 1947, 1948, he was a director of the Commonwealth Fund. And does that strike anybody as significant? Who published the Atlas, the Commonwealth Fund in Harvard? So he was became acquainted with Dr. Papanicolaou's work when he was at the Commonwealth Fund and nominated him in 1948. Um, from 1948 through 1953, the only years that the uh, Nobel Committee has online so far. Uh, he was nominated 18 times, um, except for 1950 and 1952. Um, here's a table for the number of nominations he received in those years. Um, and I also should mention Dr. Dan Ruther was the second person uh, to nominate him in 1948. I've not been able to find any biographical information about him, nor um, find anything about his uh, affiliations. Um, I kind of assume it's in the New York area. I kind of think he probably knew Dr. Sheehan, but I can't prove that. So here's a list of the 
nominators down the center, the person, the Nobel laureate for those years, and the number of nominations for those years in the center column here, and what the nomination, the laureate's uh, um, motivation was. With that, I thank you very much for your attention. nomination for the Nobel Prize. Thank anybody who has assisted us along the way with respect to scholarships, but also if there is anybody in the audience that uh, would like to contribute to scholarships, the Medical Society is one of the avenues to do so, and we do welcome your participation. If you are not a member, or if you know a member, of course, please do sign up or have a doctor that you know of Greek descent become active because of all the good things that we do. I'd like now to end by thanking uh, the uh, honoree, Dr. Hajar, and uh, the speaker, Mr. Elgert, and uh, Dr. Uh, Zerbulakis here, the Lifetime Achievement Award winner uh, this year, and uh, everyone coming here. Now, uh, Ms. Tavares, uh, our uh, uh, administrator, who has done very hard work every year for the Dr. Papanikolaou Symposium. Uh, is distributing the um, uh, CME, two CME credits you can receive for the educational event tonight. I think that's very important in uh, the regulated society we live today. Um, and uh, again, we're looking forward uh, next year uh, to having the uh, annual symposium in May uh, here at uh, Wild Cornell. All of you have a good night. May 12, 2015, New York City. We're here at uh, Cornell Medical College of uh, New York Presbyterian Hospital and uh, giving the award, uh, the annual Dr. Papa Nicolau Award uh, to uh, Dr. Hajar, Chairman of the Department of Anatomy that's now uh, labeled Department of uh, uh, Cellular Developmental Biology uh, of Cornell. Uh, the Dr. Papa Nicolau, as we all know, was one of the major uh, figures in medicine. Uh, he was a great Hellene and a great researcher. And uh, Dr. Papa Nicolau was also co-founder of the Hellenic Medical Society of New York that sponsors this event every year. Uh, we are proud that we have a Hellenic Medical Society scholarship at Cornell that uh, gives over $5,000 annually to a medical student at the WOW Cornell Medical College, preferably of Hellenic origin. We also awarded tonight uh, six awards to high school students of Greek heritage of the greater metropolitan area, New York metropolitan area, uh, who wrote essays on Dr. Papanikola. Uh, recipient of award, well, Lifetime Achievement Award, was Dr. John Zervodakis, a uh, long-term member of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology here at Cornell, who received the award from Dr. Frank Chervernak, the department chairman of OBGYN. Uh, at uh, Cornell and uh, it was very inspirational to see uh, many members, faculty members and colleagues of the department of OBGYN being here uh, to uh, commemorate the work of Dr. Zerudakis in New York City and uh, at Cornell. Uh, Dr. Papa Nicola was born on the island of Evia, as we know, and the Panevoikos Society, uh, represented by Mr. Tony Ringos, uh, did present uh, some uh, biographical data of uh, Dr. Papa Nicolau. Uh, the other speaker was uh, Mr. Paul Elgert, uh, who is a well-known cytopathologist at NYU Langone, New York University, and Bellevue Hospital. Uh, who spoke on the criteria for the detection of uh, cervical cancer in women. And we know that the PAP test that Dr. Papa Nicolau established has saved the lives of millions of women around the world. Um, we had uh, the opportunity to tour the laboratory 
uh, area where uh, Dr. Papa Nicolau had uh, done his seminal research uh, here at uh, the University Hospital. And uh, we are looking forward uh, to the next uh, Papa Nicolau, Dr. Papa Nicolau Symposium uh, to take place in May 2016. So uh, I would like uh, everyone who's listening here to be inspired by Dr. Papa Nicolau's work, by the good work of the Hellenic Medical Society that's offering scholarships uh, to medical students and to the Greek Teachers Association, Prometheus, uh, whose president, uh, Professor uh, Trianda Filu, tonight gave six awards to Greek American uh, high school students. Uh, we look forward to uh, all the sponsors, including the Hellenic Medical Society of New York, the Federation of Hellenic Medical Societies of North America, Panevoiko Society, WOW Medical College, and uh, the Federation of Hellenic uh, Societies of Greater New York uh, to continue working together and having such an exemplary uh, event every year that makes all Hellenes and Philippines proud. We'd like uh, also to thank MGTV that has been uh, always uh, uh, coming and uh, taking uh, uh, pictures and videos of our events and uh, helping us in the distribution of the charitable efforts that the Hellenic Medical Society of New York and the Federation of Hellenic Societies of North America stand for. MGTV USA. Οι δραστηριότητε τη ελληνοαμερικανική κοινότητα με βίντεο και πλήρε ρεπορτάζ. Επισκεφτείτε την ιστοσελίδα μα mgtvusa.com. Καλύπτουμε καθημερινά τα γεγονότα στην Ομογένεια.